dive into urinary tract infections. All right, so urinary tract infection. That would be, the urinary tract goes from, uh, includes, so from the kidneys, you have the ureters here, you got the bladder, and then you got the urethra. When we're talking about urinary tract infection, we're not talking about the kidneys. That would be polynephritis, and that will be in my next video. We're talking about cystitis or urethritis. Cystitis referring to infection of the bladder and urethritis, meaning infection around the urethra. So, typically, infections here are going to be something like E. coli. Now, why is that? E. coli is found in stool, and think of how close the anus is to the exit of the urethra, especially on women. Um, so, risk factors, you see women here, they don't have a penis that has that extra distance. They're very close to get the E. coli to contaminate the urethral opening. Also, uh, women have hormonal imbalances that may cause changes in the, uh, the, the consistency of the mucosa and the type of bacteria that might be uh, living in the vagina. Okay, other risk factors for urinary tract infection would be sex. If uh, when you have sex, you're exposing yourself to uh, different bacterias, and so uh, sex can be a risk factor. Also, having a catheter, such as a Foley catheter, um, when it's in, you're unable to void that urine uh, to wash the bacteria out of the urethra, so it can put you at risk for an infection. Uh, having a renal calculi, a kidney stone, so you have a stone in there, you don't have the urine flowing like it should. And also the stones have all kinds of, they're porous, they have all kinds of whole holes in them that can hold onto the bacteria. Diabetes mellitus, uh, because uh, I believe this is due to having an increased amount of sugar, it's being peed out in the urine, and so bacteria like sugar, and so they have an increased amount of uh, sugar in the urine, so bacteria like it. Also incontinence, this being stool bowel incontinence, uh, if you have feces all over your urethral opening, uh, meatus, then, uh, well, some of it's going to get in there. Signs and symptoms of urinary tract infection. So, uh, a burning upon urination. Um, frequency, which means urinating more times than normal. And urgency, which is urinating, you got to go suddenly. Okay. Frequency and urgency can lead to the sign of incontinence, urinary incontinence. You may have nausea and tenderness. Both of these would be like referred. Um, so, the tenderness can refer to the back but be careful because so can polynephritis. Patient has an infection with any infection, you can see fever here. And the urine uh, may appear to be cloudy and have a strong odor. Okay? So those would be some signs and symptoms. Now, elderly, uh, they can sometimes have, lead to confusion. And so that's a, a question I like to throw on test, so keep that in mind. Diagnosis for urinary tract infection. What they're going to do is a urinalysis and a urine culture. The difference being, Urine culture takes several days to find out what the exact bacteria is so that they can make sure they have the exactly right antibiotic. But they're not going to wait several days to start antibiotics. They're going to do urinalysis. They're going to see uh, telltale signs of urinary tract infection, such as increased red blood cell count, low blood cell count, and there's a bunch of others. But if they see, hey, this person has an infection, they're going to start them on an antibiotic, typically something that they think will work. Typically it's E. coli, so they'll maybe start them on rocephin, which works on... E. coli. And then, a couple days later, when they get urine culture, if it's some weird bacteria, then they can change it then. Uh, diagnosis, they may do CTs or ultrasounds, maybe to look and see if there's some sort of a, um, a fistula, maybe it's going from the colon into the bladder, such as in a cancer patient, or they may look to see if there's renal stones. Okay, treatment includes uh, make sure this patient stays hydrated. The more urine you got flushed out of the system, the more it's going to flush the bacteria out. Making sure they take their antibiotics to the full extent of treatment, just like any antibiotic. Good hygiene, changing the underwear after working out. And for women, wiping from front to back. With hygiene also, kind of like if you have sex, urinate after to get any bacteria that might be in there out of your system. Uh, and also timely removal of catheters that are not necessary. This is because, like I said, it holds onto the bacteria. So you want to daily, does this patient still need their catheter? If you don't think so, ask the doctor. The other thing is, uh, sometimes they'll give the patients medicines to get rid of pain and bladder spasms, such as peridium. They love to throw this on the test. When you take peridium, your urine turns orange, and that's normal. But keep that in mind. And so this is urinary tract infection. My next video, we're going to talk about pyelonephritis.